How's it going everybody? Welcome back to that car vlog channel. If you don't already know, I'm Andy and this is going to be the first of several videos that I plan to make helping people look for economical vehicles. Right now it's just the beginning of July 2022 and gas prices are crazy. Here in East Tennessee, especially in the Knoxville area, we're talking gas prices above $4.50 a gallon. We were just recently in Tampa, Florida, where prices were closer to five. California, they're up over six, almost seven dollars per gallon. And of course, across the pond, we're talking about nine, ten, or more dollars per gallon of gas when you do the the you know the conversions. So obviously, big trucks and SUVs and stuff are starting to make a little bit less sense because they got the big V6s, V8s, and they're just they drink a lot of gas. Luckily though, there's still a lot of economical vehicles out there on the market that get some pretty good gas mileage. And this is gonna be the first video that I'm gonna make about one of those. So let's get started. This is a 2019 Nissan Versa S Plus. Introduced in the second half of 2006 for the 07 model year, the Nissan Versa was Nissan's entry into the subcompact segment to compete with cars like Hyundai Accent, Kia Rio, Chevy Aveo, that sort of thing, Toyota Yaris and, have, and whatnot. That first generation included a sedan and a Versa hatchback and ran until 2011. In 2012, Nissan updated to the second generation, which is what we have here that ran through 2019. So this particular car is the final model year of the second generation. We're gonna take a look at this second generation Nissan Versa and uh, show you what it's all about, talk a little bit about it, and uh, hopefully add it to your shopping list of you know, cars you wanna consider if you're in the market to buy another vehicle and you're looking to save on gas, because right now that's very, very important to people is saving on gas. Now, like I said a second ago, this 2019 Versa is an S Plus model. I'll explain to you what that means in a minute. So you got four different trims of the second gen Versa, S, S Plus, SV, and SL. This, so this is your second highest trim. So it's got a little bit more than your S. And if we just take a tour around this thing, this is the basic style. All of your Versas looked exactly like this. Of course, some varying colors. Uh, you got mm, nice chrome accents around the grill. You got some pretty good headlights. Um, down here, are these black inserts in the bumper. In your highest trim and highest trim only, you could these would be replaced with fog lights. Otherwise, all your Versas just had those black panels. No alloy wheels on this. I believe you could get those in, uh, again, the highest trim. But here you just get your plastic wheel covers over black steelies. Black door handles. Once again, you have to step up above the S Plus to get chrome door handles, or at least chrome coated door handles. Here around back, you can see the design of the tail lights and whatnot. Same for every Versa, no matter what. Um, this spoiler is specific to anything above your S. Once you step up to S Plus, it does add this spoiler. I don't think it does anything. <laughs> this car isn't exactly powerful enough to need downforce, but hey, I guess it adds a little bit of a little bit of style, so I guess that's something. Uh, I do have the center roof mounted antenna. Probably not worth noting, but I noted it. But there's ba the basic shape of your second gen Versa. It's not a lot to talk about. It's a basic Econobox car, but I mean it's not a bad looking car as far as subcompacts go all right key for your s plus just a basic steel key there is no power options in this vehicle oh there's one i'll show you but no keyless entry there's not even power locks i'm assuming maybe if you stepped up to your higher trims you got that but nothing here open it up and you're gonna see this is a basic econo box car so basic all black door handles there's not really hardly even any padding on these doors at all it's mostly just hard plastic manual door locks crank windows you do have power mirrors though let me go ahead and start the engine up real quick because it is roasting in here you do have four speakers in this car one in each door down here to the left of the wheel you got your traction off button as well as your hood release and your fuel door release right next to each other like nissan likes to do here on the steering wheel you got some standard nissan switch gear you've got your phone and radio controls which is actually kind of nice to have 
um, and this is an economy car. On this side, cruise control, which is another thing that um, you didn't get until you stepped up to the S Plus trim, which this car, of course, is. Gauge cluster is less than basic. Um, you get a big speedometer, a tachometer for some reason, even though it's got a CVT transmission, and this little digital display off to the right here, which includes your fuel gauge right over here, a digital readout of the fuel. And you can click through a few pages. You can get uh, miles to empty, your overall miles, trip A, trip B, um, current MPGs while you're driving. You can get uh, your average MPGs, and that's pretty much it. One gauge this does not include, which annoys me greatly, is a temperature gauge. There is no engine temperature gauge on, on here. I'm assuming that, uh, hopefully anyways, that Nissan put a look, some thought into it and is at least going to give you a warning light when the engine starts to reach, you know, above correct temperatures but still in my personal opinion no vehicle should ever not include a temperature gauge on the dash but i don't work for nissan in the middle where there is a seven inch touchscreen infotainment although it's more of an entertainment really because it's pretty much just the radio the only reason i assume that the versa got a touchscreen display at all was because 2018 was the year the government said all vehicles must be produced with a reversing camera and this thing does indeed have a reversing camera on it pre-2018 it didn't even have this screen so i can only assume that the only reason nissan put the money into this and i'll bet you i'm right is because of that mandate coming down here defroster ac button your basic ac control single zone only your recirculation is controlled with an old school lever there's no button no, no electronic stuff for that so it is kind of old school, but at the same time, that is one less thing that can, uh, electronic thing that can break. And going back to the radio, you, you do at least have Bluetooth inputs. You, you can actually sync your phone to this thing, play your music, you can make calls on this thing. Otherwise, there's really nothing to see here. You got a few settings, but otherwise, basic radio. It does have a button here to put it between night and day brightness. This is on automatic, of course. Not exactly amazing, but it is there and you get the backup. If we make our way below the radio, you do have a USB charging port, which is nice, a USB-A and auxiliary input, so you can plug your three and a half millimeter in there and uh, play your tunes wired if you want to. And off to the side, if we pull out this little plug here, you do have a 12 volt round port as well. Over to the right side of the dash, if we open the glove box, it's another one of those deep <coughs> glove boxes that Nissan likes to put in their cars and the Juke. Kind of funny though, I just reviewed a 21 Titan Pro 4X and the glove box isn't half that size. Down the middle, not much to see. You get two cup holders ahead of your automatic shifter. Here's your shifter, it's kind of a ball shape. Back here's your manual parking brake. And behind that, two more cup holders. Here's your cloth seats, basic cloth seats. Nothing really to see here. There's nothing special about them whatsoever. Completely manually adjustable in every direction. Again, no frills, no power options, except for the mirrors. This is a, an Econo box car. Coming up from the dash, basic rear view. You get your reading lamps here, which uh, nothing special about those. You got your dwarf setting. You got that. It's one thing. It's actually not even lamps. It's lamp. It's an interior light right there in front of you. Pull down your visors. Each side does have a mirror, non-lighted, of course. But you do have to get the visor extensions, which is definitely something. But these are just, and these things here, they're, 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 they're plastic. They're not even padded, they're just hard plastic. Once again, cheap car. All right, climbing into the back. First of all, we look at our door panel, exactly the same as the front. I mean, this is one of those cars where the rear panels are the same as the front because they're all just as cheap. It's not like they left anything out of the, the rear of the car. They just didn't put any frills anywhere. Anyway, sitting in the rear, I've got the seat adjust the front seat adjusted to me. I'm six foot, six foot and change. To fit me, this seat is slid all the way back. So I'm sitting behind me right now. And while I don't have miles of legroom back here, it's definitely not as bad as some compact cars. Now, I probably couldn't personally sit back here for very long just because I eh, my legs get restless and stuff. But it's, you're definitely not cramped. You can get you can technically sit three people on this back seat. Um, however, you can see how far over I come. This side of me is right on the edge of the seat. So if you're going to put three people back here, they need to be kids or very thin people. And I am not a very thin people at all. Also headroom. It's, I can get my hand in between my head and the ceiling. If I lean back a little bit, I'm touching it, but it's, it's not bad. I, I 
still have to try to touch it, but I actually do have decent headroom in this car as well. Now, other things to note about these rear seats. One, there is no center armrest or anything that folds down from here to provide cup holders or whatever. No armrest, nothing folding. Cup holders, that's what you want to have the ones in the back of the center console for. for removable headrest, you got child seat anchors up here on the rear shelf, but that's it. This seat doesn't even fold down, so there's no trunk extension into the interior. It's just an upright seat, nothing folds, nothing special, can technically sit three people. No frills. All right, to get into your trunk, there is no electronic release of any kind on this car. You have two ways to get in the trunk. You can either use your key in this keyhole right here, or use this little lever located in the driver's footwell. And as we lift up our tr trunk lid with our sporty spoiler, with integrated third brake light, we open up into a trunk. Not much of a trunk either, but a relatively spacious trunk. It's not too tiny, but you know, it's, it's a decent sized trunk is what I can say. You can get plenty of stuff in here. You can probably get some light luggage for four people in here. Definitely a trip to the grocery store, a trip to Walmart. Not gonna be an issue if you're not already carrying a lot of stuff around in here. You do get a big trunk mat that's got the Versa embroidered on it. That's kind of nice. If we pick up on the floor, you do have the compact spare and a jack. So you do get that much. You don't have to worry about uh, not having a spare. That's nice. Otherwise, literally nothing of note in the trunk of this second generation Versa. All right, now to the powerhouse of the Nissan Versa second generation. 1.6 liter four cylinder engine producing, get ready for this, 109 horsepower. Woohoo! 109 horsepower, 13 less than the previous generation, which is not something automakers normally do. Normally they give you at least a little bit more, but that's what you got here across the board for the second gen Versa. 1.6 liter, 109 horsepower. Now, base models, your S, five-speed manual transmission, optional CVT. This one is the S Plus. It gets the CVT transmission standard. All of your Versas that were automatics got a CVT, as Nissan has been doing with a lot of their cars and crossovers lately. In fact, for a long time now. So, not exactly a powerhouse, not a speed demon, but that's not what it's meant to do. This thing is meant to sip fuel, and it does that pretty well. It's rated to get almost 40 miles per gallon on the highway. And in fact, I've been driving this car around for several months now, and this thing's averaging in the low 30s in combined city and highway driving, no matter how hard it gets driven. So when you're looking for an economical car, this is a very economical car. Funny thing, this hood is held up by this itty bitty little prop over here in the corner. I don't open this hood very much. I had to look for that. It's so small, but so is everything else on this car. All right, let's drive the 109 horsepower second gen Versa. First we know as we take off, it's not incredibly fast. But it makes a lot of noise. That little engine makes a lot of noise to pull this thing along. Now it's not exactly a slouch either. It will get out of its way. This car doesn't weigh very much. But still, 109 horsepower, that is not a lot. But it's not what it needs. This car is not meant for that. It's not meant for power. It's meant for being economical, being great on gas. And this thing really is, like I said a minute ago, I'm averaging between mixed highway and city driving and not always being perfectly gentle with it either. Low 30s all the time in this thing as far as APG is concerned. So it is an economical car. Now it only has a 10 gallon gas tank on it. So at that rate, your range is about right around almost 300 miles per tank. So 300 miles of 10 gallons, not too bad at all. Um, as far as driving experience, what it's like to be in here, it's actually not bad. I'm an average height um, adult male, you know, six foot and change. Um, I'm not exactly thin and I fit in here okay. And that's one thing about your modern subcompact cars, you know, most fat Americans can actually fit in them and drive them pretty well. You can see I've got a, a good amount of distance between my gut and the steering wheel. I do take up the entire seat bottom. And so I'm really close to the uh, gear selector here. If you got two big people in the car, 
you are going to be up on top of each other. You're going to be, you're going to be close. You might be bumping elbows, but you know, you're not like right on each other, like in a Ford GT or something. Oh, Ford GT. That'd be nice. Visibility, you got glass all the way around. Visibility is not a problem whatsoever. And as a small light car, even though it's not built or tuned for handling, you know, suspension, all that stuff, it's still a fairly nimble car too. So I can go around this corner right here. I mean, it's, it's not bad. You know, you still get some body roll because it's an economy car, it's not a sports car. But it's nimble as much as a small economy car is nimble. But if you need to pass somebody, put the gas down, it'll make some noise, but you'll pass them, don't worry. You're not, this thing's not so slow that it's dangerous. Uh, now the mirrors, they're okay. They could be bigger, but they're probably appropriately sized for this car. You see pretty well. No blind spot mirrors on here and definitely no blind spot monitoring because once again this thing doesn't have anything um, it does have ABS which I think in the first generation right around mid cycle went from finally being an option to being a standard um, feature on the car yes even in the mid 2000s there were cars with optional ABS funny enough um, talking about the first generation car for a while, air conditioning was an optional feature. So, I mean, th th these cars were built with the intention of being no frills, basic stuff. And in fact, this second gen Versa was actually priced as one of the lowest priced cars that you could buy in the United States. An MSRP starting at less than $12,000 for a brand new car. And I distinctly remember hearing radio commercials for a local Nissan dealership selling these things for $99.95, $10,000 for a brand new car. Now, of course, that, at that point, you're talking S trim, not even S plus, crank windows, you know, absolutely nothing on the car, an engine and a transmission pretty much. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I'm just driving this thing around the industrial park. There's no need to get it out on the highway. It does just fine on the highway. It keeps up with traffic. You can go pretty quick in it if you want to, once you get up to speed. It's not terrifying to drive on the highway it's it's really not a bad car now this again is 2019 it is the final model year of the second generation the third generation starts in 2020 and is a much better looking car i think um, and i actually have driven a 2020 uh, one time and it was pretty nice it was a pretty fairly basic trim too but it still had power windows it had a push button start down next to the gear selector and more gauges too. I think it actually has a temp gauge, um, if I'm remembering correctly. But anyway, back to the main point of this video. If you're in the market for a, a new or replacement vehicle and your focus is gas mileage, this could be a car worth considering. The second generation, especially the later ones, are still new enough to probably be fairly low mileage. Um, keep one thing in mind though, they do have the CVT automatic. We all know that Nissan's Jackco CVTs are not the greatest things in the world. Um, and you do want to do regular fluid changes on those every 30 to 40,000 miles. Uh, no matter what anybody says about the fluid, if it's a lifetime, you never change it, don't believe that crap. Change the fluid every 30 to 40. Um, anybody who is subscribed to the Car Wizard on YouTube probably has already seen the video that I'm about to say, talk about. But if you're not, go search him out and watch the video. He bought a Nissan Cube and changed the fluid and then change it again after 20,000. And if, if I'm remembering the order of events here correctly, he showed a 20,000 mile CVT fluid change in this cube. And the, the, the CVT fluid went from green to just as black as my phone here. So that just shows you the CVTs, they wear quicker and differently from a normal geared automatic transmission. But if you are gonna get one of these or at least consider it, and you do end up with one Please, dear God, make sure to maintain, maintain, maintain that CVT fluid in the transmission because we've already been through the bad CVT game with, with Nissan and it kind of burned me. Of course, I wasn't as educated 
about these CVTs as I am now. So maybe it would have been different if I had been, but I wasn't. But to the point, as long as you find a good one, you get an inspected mechanic says it's cool and uh, you maintain it. This could be a great choice, at least for a few years, you know, to save you some fuel, because it will do that. Um, at least to get you through this gas price bull crap. If, and of course, if it never ends, then just keep on driving something like this. I don't know. Now, just for fun, I've got the Drag Racer app open on my phone. We're going to see what exactly the 0 to 60 time is on this car. I'm guessing it's not going to be great, but here we go from 0. And my foot is on the floor. It never gets above 5,500 RPM. miles an hour in 14.5 14 and a half seconds to 60 <laughs> oh yeah this thing is uh it's not fast but once again that's not what it's about but i just had to do it all right folks so that's going to do it for the 2019 the final year of the second generation nissan versa this is a, uh, it's not a bad little car, at least right now when it's kind of low mileage, it's got under 50,000. As far as economy cars go, it's not too bad. It's not incredibly slow, 14.5 isn't fast, but you know, it is what it is. But 30 plus miles to the gallon, that's what you're looking for nowadays. With gas prices, four and a half to five gallons, and that's here. Other parts of the country, even the world, significantly higher. So I hope you somewhat enjoyed the video. I hope it was informative. And if you're looking at one of these, I hope it helped you to figure out if you want it or not. Um, definitely go try one out, test drive it, see what you think. Hopefully I've got a few more videos like this coming up soon. I should have another one um, at some point coming on a similar vehicle. Hopefully I can at least help do my part to educate some people about, I will note the second generation Versa was also available in a hatchback version. They called the Versa Note. So if you're looking for a little more interior space, you can also opt for one of those as well. Should get similar MPGs, but maybe a little bit more cargo volume. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the notification bell so you'll know whenever a new video goes up. Also, follow on Facebook and Instagram at that car vlog channel. Same, same thing. Great way to know when a new video goes up. Also, look for a link to a list of cars I'll be interested in reviewing on my channel. If you've got anything that is or isn't on that list, Hit me up in my email in the description below. I'll try to work something out. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Y'all have a good one. Happy shopping.